edition of Daily Wisdom from Bhagavad Gita. Wish you a great day or having a wonderful start to your Monday if you are in India. So Radhe Radhe again. Um, let's get started with our opening prayers like we always do. Uh, quite a few things lined up today. New shloka like we always do on a Sunday plus some other stuff as well. So let me share my screen and then we'll get underway. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, let's get started with our opening prayers then. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwarha, Guru Sakshat Par Brahma, Tasmai Shri. Guru De Namaha Vasudeva Sutam Devam Kamsa Chanura Mardanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum Radhe Radhe, good morning, good evening to all of you. A very warm welcome. So let's get started with our topic of discussion today. Um, Shtoka, we'll get back to it. So let's get started with our Soul Soup segment. As part of Soul Soup segment, we are doing the science of mind management. How do we befriend our mind? So... We have reached a logical checkpoint. So a quick recap I will do today. What we have spoken about so far and then we'll continue to build on it. So the first thing is our mind has the potential of becoming our best friend or the worst enemy. Right? That's what we have spoken about at length. Um, both right now, it's, it's not so much of our good friend, but our endeavor and especially spirituality is the process through which we can make it our best friend to our benefit, where we can use it as an asset. Right now, it's a liability, whether we know it or not, uh, for us. The second aspect that we spoke about, uh, give me a sec, what's going on here, yeah. is that our mind is a subtle machine that incessantly creates thoughts. It will continue to create thoughts. I think it creates about 40,000 or 60,000 thoughts a day. Uh, if you are an overthinker, maybe you are exceeding that as well. But it continues to generate thoughts. You don't have any control over it. Okay? Through our experience, we would know that. When we spoke that, these thoughts are nothing but a bundle of energy that impacts us in multiple ways. Now, the way we look, you know, the kind of vibe, vibes or vibrations that we radiate, our health, our experience of happiness and much more is dictated by our thoughts only. That is how important these bundles of energies are, which keep on getting repeated in our head. And then thoughts, these thoughts, when we choose to energize them, thoughts will come. But the thoughts that we, we energize, they fructify into actions. And if we wish to improve our actions, we need to improve our thoughts. Okay, So it's very simple. Every action, the, the seed of that action is sown in the thought itself. Without a thought, you will not take an action, right? So that is how it works. So if you have to improve our actions, you have to improve our thoughts. Quality of thoughts has to be improved. There's a direct relationship there. And then thought by thought, we are forging our destiny as well. Because whether we are attracting favorable circumstances or otherwise, they are all dictated by the kind of thoughts we are harboring. Okay, that is how important these thoughts are. Okay. So we are forging our destiny. It's like what we are experience in life, uh, in in future and in, in the forthcoming lives as well, future lives as well, is dictated by the kind of thoughts we are nurturing or energizing in our head. That is how important it is. So it's not something which is innocuous. You know, something came, went, you know, Something came, but so it's important for us not only to improve the quality of our thoughts, but also the thoughts that we choose to energize. 
because that has a direct correlation with the circumstances we end up uh, inviting in our life. And then we also spoke that the external world is made by God. It's a veritable form of God self, right? Ishava Semidam Sarvam and perfect for ele elevation. This world is like Swami Vivekananda had said, like a gymnasium, okay, where you build muscles. Basically, this is a gymnasium where you train your mind. And the change we need to bring about in our lives must begin from within. Okay, that is the key thing. Now, spirituality is, is a completely an internal business, right? There's nothing on the external we need to do. It's all an inward journey. And um, uh, the changes, the transformations uh, that we are looking for, that is an inward journey. And uh, that have to happen inside, on the inside. So the things that we need to adorn ourselves with is not on the outside. Okay, outside we can wear good clothes, we can wear jewels and a lot of other stuff to look good. But that does not count for much because what God looks for is on the inside. And these inner adornments can only be attained through spiritual understanding and aligning to those principles. So with that said, let's move on. Uh, we will continue to build on this. Now we will... As part of our next, uh, uh, you know, session, we will start bringing in why do we need to, you know, how do we manage our mind? How do we read our mind? How we, do we get to understand the mechanics or, or the workings of the mind? Because only when we understand something, can we fix it or do something about it? And that is what we are going to spend a good amount of time on, uh, the Soul Soup segment. Now let's move on. Um, solar Eclipse. In India, I think it's going to start at about 9-12 p.m. tomorrow. And in here, U.S. also, it's going to happen tomorrow. So it's, of course, giving a boost to the economy as well because a lot of people, they are thronging into places where they can get a good glimpse of it and, and uh, buying stuff and all that stuff. But uh, there's another significance of solar eclipse. Does anybody know that? First of all, it's, it's a pretty rare event. Does anybody know why it's rare? This is something that is going to happen. So moon is going to come in between earth and sun, which is going to give a bit of a shadow. Give me a sec. Sorry about that. Okay. So significance of solar eclipses, the moon, it comes in between earth and sun. Now this is a rare occurrence because the orbit of the sun and the moon is not such that it circles the earth fully. So for it to cover that part, plus the plane in which it rotates around the earth is not the same at the same plane as or the same orbit as the uh, the one which earth, earth rotates around the sun with, right? So to for that to align and get into that, it's a pretty rare event. Okay? Um, now it's it's good utilization of his, of course, if you want to see it, you need to wear gogs. Okay, our little one is going to school and I think they're going to give some special glasses. Don't look at it directly. It's not good for our retina. It can cause damages. Um, but some people, they invest time to do meditation, charity and stuff like that. Okay, so it's a good, good way. I mean, it's good to do meditation regardless, but some people spend time uh, doing that as reflecting and contemplating on the grandness of this universe and all these kind of unique things that happen plus an inward opportunity for an inward journey as well right um more importantly does anybody know there's another historical significance of solar eclipse does it ring bells no okay so the other significance of solar eclipse is that during dwapar it was during the solar eclipse that Lord Krishna, along with his 6,108 wives, went to Kurukshetra Brahmakund to take a bath. Okay, it is, That happened during the solar eclipse only. And when he went there, it was after 100 years he had departed Braj. So at that time, Radharani and all the gopis, they went to meet Krishna as well. But then he, they saw him in his Dwarka Dhish form and they said there's a bit of formality here. That sweetness that they experienced in Braj is missing. So they said we are going to take him from there all the way up to Braj to experience the same bliss mm -hmm. which is famously known as Rathyatra. So that distance was close to 450 kilometers. If you take NH44, it will take about 5 hours today. 
but at that time i don't know how long it took because they went through they made a chariot for them and and took them all the way so that beautiful event of rath yatra the cause for that was another solar eclipse um, because of which krishna had uh, gone to kurukshetra and then you know they brought him back to braj after a separation of 100 years okay it was a long long time he and uh, the devotion of gopis was so much that uh, while coming back when he was on the chariot lord krishna he went into mahabhav looking at their devotion which is divine ecstasy and uh, he was being brought brought to braj along with subhadra and baldev balaram as well so it's like when you you are you know it's like have you touched an electric wire i mean don't do that i'm just telling you if you touch an electric wire you get a current and if somebody else touches you you also get a current somebody else touch they will also get a current right so it's a current chain that can get established so looking at krishna subhadra also went into mahabhav and looking at subhadra and krishna balram also went into mahabhav okay so all three were in mahabhav that is where the jagannath deities are established okay so that also happened uh, solar eclipse had some kind of a significance in that events unfolding leading up to the rath yatra yes sandeep you had a question there is a comment from rema ji uh, it also happened during mahabharata okay yeah yeah that was uh, artificially induced i think by krishna sudarshan chakra to kill jayadrath i believe yeah so that happened as well so krishna can make anything happen right uh, based on what he wishes to achieve right is god it's his playground anyways okay now let's get to our shloka i think the the slide sorting got a little maybe um i feel continue i continue I, would it it makes sense to make a break in between maybe i'll do that and then i'll we'll get back to the shloka discussion again i will recite it will take about three hands and then we'll get started so we are on 5.13 today sarva karmani manasa sanyasyaste sukham vashi नवद्वारे पुरे देही नुवन्न कारयन ओके लेट्स टेक प्लीज थ्री हैंड्स श्याम जी राधे राधे प्लीज गो हेड राधे 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 सर्व कर्माणि मनसा संन्यास्यास्ते सुखम वशी नव द्वारे पुरे देही नैव कुरवन कारयन राधे 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 वेरी नाइस थैंक यू श्याम जी श्री रम्या जी राधे 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 सर्व कर्माणि मन मनसा संन्यास्यास्ते सुखम वशी नव द्वारे पुरे देही नैव कुरवन कारयन थैंक यू Hey, nice. Thank you, Shiramya. Is one more? We can take hand. One more hand. Only one more. So oh. maybe in that case, I'll take Pail Devi. We haven't heard her for so long. So okay, maybe. we can take two more. That's fine. <laughs> Radhe Radhe, please go ahead, Pail Devi. Radhe Radhe. Sarv Karmani Mansa Sanyaste Sukham Vashi. नव द्वारे पुरे देही नेव कुरवन कारयन राधे 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 थैंक यू पल्ली उदय कुमार जी राधे 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 सर्व कर्माणि मनसा संन्यास्यास्ते सुखम वशी नव द्वारे पुरे देही नैव कुरवन कारयन राधे राधे Thank you, Lady Radha Radha. Okay, we can take one more hand, and then we'll get started. Video on to Sandhya Sandhya ji. ji, you have turned on your video, so we'll make an exception for you. Please go ahead. Radha Radha Sandhya Ji, please go ahead. Thank you, Radha Radha. Radha Radha. Sarva Karmani Manasa San Sanyasya Ste Sukambasi Navadware Pure Dehi Naiva Kurvan Nakarayan. Thank you Thank so much. Thank you, Priya Ji, Pragi Ji. Tomorrow you get the first privilege. let's get started so in this shloka uh, lord krishna is saying the embodied beings uh, who are self controlled and detached reside happily in the city of nine gates free from thoughts that they are the doers or the cause of anything 
So he's talking a few things here. He's talking about embodied beings, embodied beings, which is none other than us. And but then he's qualifying them, the ones who are self-controlled and detached. These are the two qualifications. They happily reside in the city of nine gates. We'll talk about that city of nine gates. And free from thoughts that they are doers or the cause of anything. I mean, pretty loaded stuff. We'll continue to discuss about this, okay? So, um, yeah, it'll take a few sessions to go through the entire details of this shloka. So, let's get started. Okay, soul soup, we are already done it. I need to restructure the slides. Okay, let's get started. So, what happened? Here is somebody who's sick. Not well. So when somebody is not well, tooth, couple of things need to happen. They need to feel normal. Right? They need to feel unsick or from unwell to well. That is there. So part one is, it's a two-step process. What is the part one? You know, one is to remove sickness causing virus, bacteria, etc. They need to take whatever medication is needed or rest is needed. So they become normal. But then the, there is another aspect to it. And the part two, second part is to regain health. In other words, recovery is done in two parts. Right? So you feel normal and then you regain health because something changes and you're suffering from uh, some kind of an ailment. Now, if you look at it, one is to remove the negative and then one other one is to introduce the positive. Both things happen. Right? Now, similarly, in this chapter has three main sections. Chapter 5 that we are doing. Section 1, which is the first six verses, it explains Karam Yoga. We revisited Karam Yoga, if you remember. And uh, where Lord is telling that it's the same result as the Gyan Yoga, but it is easier than Gyan Yoga. Okay, this is talk, talking about Karam Yoga. And then 7 to 16, what we are on right now, it is going to talk about how Karam Yoga remains, how Karam Yoga can take us, make us free from bondage. Okay, there's a bit of a typo there. How it is non-binding when we do that. And then uh, verses 17 to 29 are going to tell us how it leads us to liberation. Okay, this is how it is structured. So it is first telling us how do we uh, remove the negative part of it, which is the binding karma. Binding karma is our problem right now, right? What we are doing is, is basically uh, uh, leading to some kind of a bondage. So it's talking about how do you make it non-binding? And then you get into the process of liberation as well, right? Bhagavad Gita talks about, that's where it ends, right? Bhakti path is there as well, but then it talks about the deeper aspect of it as well. So that is how these are structured. Now let's move on. Now, how is it to be understood that same actions, you perform same actions, but those actions, they bound few people to the material existence, but others are released from the material bondage. So the previous verse, Lord Krishna gave an answer to that, right? What's the basis for that if you see it rope rope is what a hook or what you call that uh, uh, you know you are riveted or hooked to something right so if you look at it you know, from a material standpoint our mind is riveted to these things some kind of an attachment of results and it could be some material acquisition you know things that we are attached to and our mind uh, hankers for that so and on the other side if we snap or break that attachment around the result or around the hankerings that we have and become equanimous around it, that that basically differentiates between a binding karma and a non-binding karma. So if you look at it, the snapping or breaking that bond is the key here. Mm -hmm. The people who are unattached and unmotivated by material rewards, they are not bound by karma. So that is a simple principle. You are not attached to the outcome or the material rewards part of it, right? And then that doesn't become a karma. Then what does it become? It becomes a karma at that point. What is a karma? But those who are craving reward and obsessed with the desire to enjoy material pleasures, they have to, they, are, they, are, they draw reactions of their work. Okay, that is what the concept of karma yoga was. You relinquish the attachment to a particular outcome or any outcome for that matter. You are not focused on the results. You are focused on the process because you understand that the results are dispensed by God and it is a factor of a lot of variables. 
and you simply have acceptance around it. So you are entitled to your efforts, but you're not entitled to the results. So when we snap that attachment, that's when it becomes Karam Yoga. So action is same, but the motivation and the attachment, those two variables could either cause it lack of motivation or lack of attachment can cause it to be a non-binding karma or, or presence of attachment and, and motivation to enjoy it for yourself can make it a binding karma. Okay, that makes the whole difference. So now let's understand it. So what, is it really difficult to do that? Now, it really depends on the attitude you bring to the fold, right? Now, this is a quick story. Now, there's a truck driver. He was getting trained by a senior. They went on a long distance drive. After five hours, the, 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 this apprentice, he got tired and handed the truck over to his teacher. The senior, he was able to, it was a pretty, you know, business as usual for this person. And he continued to drive it without much effort. So this guy who was, uh, you know, apprentice, he was pretty impressed. And he said, you don't seem exhausted. What is your secret? Because he, he felt exhausted pretty quickly doing that. He said, when you leave home for driving, what do you tell your wife? He said, I tell her that I'm going to drive my truck. Now, this guy says, when I root, I just say that I'm, I'm going to ride to the countryside. So there's an attitude completely different. Like there's a saying in English. If you treat your work like a play, if you enjoy it, you will not have to work not even for a single day for the rest of your life. Right? So it's the attitude you bring to the food. So now one way of looking at it is, hey, Karam Yoga, I have to give up my attachment. I have to give up the motivation. Will I truly enjoy it? You know, what is the point of, you know, motivate? I mean, how will I motivate myself? And what's the point of living? Some people say, if everything has to be offered to God and I'm not the enjoyer and all that stuff. But when you understand the deeper secret, when you when you get the motivation behind it, right, that what you are giving up is, you know, what you call the trinkets and what you'll get is an ultimate treasure. And when you are convinced about it and you start relishing the taste along the journey, then it becomes a play at that point. Okay, then it's it's like, okay, you it won't even seem like an effort at that point is essentially how I understood it, right? So um, you have to give yourself good reasons, good motivation, motivation around it. And, and when it soon enough, when it becomes not soon enough, it might take a bit of a time, but when it becomes a practice, then it becomes effortless like any other thing in life, right? Uh, but the point here is that uh, when you enjoy doing something, when you have a strong why behind something, then it becomes easier. But if you don't have a strong why to do, it will continue to be a struggle. Even in seva, there are two ways to look at it. One is I'm doing this seva. Oh, sorry, I have to do this seva. And second attitude is I have to do it for Guru's pleasure. Okay, so I have to do seva and I have to do seva for Guru's pleasure. Both can make a lot of difference in the way you approach something. So there are ways to uh, motivate ourselves on this path and to make it our second nature so that it becomes less of an effort and more of a play. Yes, Sandhya, you wanted to ask something? Yeah, Radhe Radhe, there's this question from DBG. Um, I... To be free from karma, uh, is snapping attachment enough or do we also need to dedicate the results to God? The first step is to snap attachment. Dedicate the pure karma yoga. Technically, if you ask, God has to be brought into the mix. Right? Yoga means union and uh, God has to be brought into the mix. So yes, God, when you, but this is the first step where you snap attachment. But when you snap attachment, you still need to fill it with something, right? So you you do it. Your attachment is to God now. You're doing it for his pleasure. And that makes it a perfect karma yoga. But if there are some atheists or people who don't understand the concept of God and they want to limit it as let's focus on process. I mean, I hear it in a lot of interviews and even in corporate jargon these days. Let's follow the process, folks. And not so much on the outcome will take care of it by all by itself. Sportsmen use this mantra as well. Now, do they have to be an atheist believer in God? They don't have to be. That this principle itself is so powerful that it will bring out the best in you when you are process oriented. Having said that, that is the first step. The second step is to bring God into the mix. Because if you limit it to that step, yes, you will start excelling. But not to a level which uh, it will still be capped. Not to a level where you truly had the potential to reach because you are still not bringing God into the mix. At best, you will end up doing sattvic deeds. 
right? Without being attached to the results and results being a byproduct of the hard work or the process that you have followed. But God has to be brought into the mix for it to be called as Karma Yoga. I hope I answered your question. So it becomes play only when we have a strong why to proceed, right? And then it becomes an enjoyable journey because you have a very good motivation. I'm doing it for the pleasure of God. I'm doing it for the pleasure of Guru, the Seva. If you don't have it, then that sense of, you know, I'm doing it will always be there. And it may even seem like a burden, right? In Sevas, it can happen at times. Oh my God, I have to do this. But when you're doing it with a strong why, then it becomes, uh, you know, it becomes, uh, you, you're giving yourself a good motivation to do that. So let's get to the Dahar Vidya. What is Dahar Vidya in this shloka? Okay, Lord Krishna is talking about a city. Right? He's saying there is a city and within a city there is a house and there is a courtyard. Right? And then there is a something very precious there in that courtyard. There is a space and you need to unlock it. Now, this analogy that he has given is, let's try to understand it, that secret and that secret, once you know this, then you have pretty much known everything that is there to be known. Okay, so simplified, he has simplified this whole scripture thing that we are trying to, uh, the essence of scripture, so to say. So what is this analogy that he has given? Let's try to understand. It is called Dahar Vidya, by the way. So this city that he's talking about is our body. Okay, now this place um, that he's talking, the house that he's talking about is our heart. Okay, um, our heart is that house and the courtyard that he's talking about is the place in the heart. You see this place it looks pretty interesting, right? That is the place in our heart itself. Yeah. And what is there in that, which is something that is worthy of knowing. And once you know this, there is nothing else to be known. When you open this box, the God itself, okay, that is where God resides. Once you know about God, there is absolutely nothing there to be known. Our scriptures tell us that for you to realize God, you have to know God. And our scriptures also tell us that you cannot know God. Right? But then you can, the, how you resolve this paradox or contradictory statement is you can, you cannot know God. But you can know God or if, if he chooses to, if he bestows his grace to you. Right. So this uh, analogy that is being used, it is called Dahar Vidya. Veda stuff is about it. There's a city, cities. The, the city, there's a house, house, there's a courtyard, and then there's a secret. Right. The city he talks about is this body. The house in the body is the heart. Courtyard is the space of the heart, like we said. And then the Bhagavan Paramatma itself, the Brahm, is resided within. In fact, this question is there, right? Where does God reside? God, there is no place where God does not reside. But in Ramayan, uh, it was uh, when I think Lord Ram had asked this question when he went to meet, uh, he was there going through the forest. He had asked this to Valmaki, where should I go and reside? And he was like, Prabhu, first you tell me, where do you not reside? Okay. But nevertheless, now that you're doing the Leela and you have asked me a question, I have to answer this question for you, right? So he told him to reside I think he told him where to reside in that forest in Panjavati. But he said, but you reside in a pure heart. In a devotee's or in a pure heart. You reside there. So there's another place for God's uh, residence is Urupur. Like in India, they have Kanpur, Nurpur and places like that. Palampur, that's a place of my hometown's name. So like Luzville, um, so many villages are there. That is how, and similar to that, this poor is Urpur, God's residence, but not a regular one. I mean, he's residing in all the hearts, but then he chooses to manifest in a heart which is clean. So that is how uh, that is that is that is the analogy is which is given here, um, Dahar Vidya, that you know you've got a city and you've got a house, and then within that a courtyard, and within that courtyard, once you know the Brahm, there is absolutely nothing to be known. Okay. But then it also talks about the nine gates. Let's try to understand that city of nine gates. It's talking about what are those nine gates? These are two ears, two eyes, two nostrils, one mouth, genitals, anus. That makes it the nine gates. That is why it's called Navadware as well. 
Okay. It would have been 10 if God had given us two minds, but he has given us only mind and one mouth only. Now, people who are in material consciousness, they identify with the body itself. And people who are in divine consciousness, they identify with the Supreme Lord residing within the body. So either you associate yourself with the body or you associate yourself with the Lord. And that is the process. We have to remove these layers and these layers of uh, ignorance have to be systematically dismantled. Now, Shvetashvatar Upanishad says the same as well. Bhagavad Gita, as we know, it is an essence of the scriptures. Right? It is a distilled essence, essence of the scriptures that we have. And this same, this uh, similar verse is there in Shvetashvatar uh, Upanishad as well. Now, Upanishads... Um, like it is said, our scriptures have three gateways of under, to understanding. One is the Upanishads, the second is the Vedat Sutra, and third, third is the Bhagavad Gita. Now, if you choose to read Upanishads or Vedant Sutra, it's pretty esoteric. Aphorisms and stuff, uh, those kind of things are used, and it may confuse you further. But Bhagavad Gita is what God has done is He has distilled the message from all the Upanishads and presented us to us in these 700 verses. And it continues to be relevant even today. Right? If you think about it, anything can become outdated or it may require a revision after a while. But as we see in today's world, it is becoming more and more relevant. Even corporate strategies and all, I mean, they may not know Bhagavad Gita, but if you look at those concepts and if you have been reading Bhagavad Gita, you'll be able to appreciate what they teach you is barely scratching the surface. So nevertheless, coming back to this, it is a direct state, you know, this particular verse uh, is, if you look at it, there's a similarity, what is there in Upanishads as well, where it talks about Navadvare, that Lord Krishna is talking about. And it says that body consists of these nine gates that we spoke about. And within this body also sits the Supreme Lord, who is the controller of all living beings in the world. And when the soul establishes its connection with the Lord, it becomes free like him, even while residing in the body. And then in this verse, he's saying that the embodied soul is neither the doer nor the cause of anything. Now, this concept can really confuse us, which is where we are going to spend a good amount of time with some analogies and examples again here, right? And then, the, of course, the question comes that God is the actual cause of actions in the world. Uh, this is answered in the next verses, but we will talk about this aspect. And then how do we get beyond this understanding of sit living in these this body with the nine gates and getting into being getting situated in this consciousness of feeling God or who I truly am. How do we do that is where we will talk about a few tools uh, starting with witness consciousness tomorrow and a few more. Um, the things that can be practiced for us to take closer to our true identity and dismantle these layers of ignorance where we relate ourselves to body you know, this body. To make the matters worse, we start relating ourselves to this mind, our intellect, and then our ego as well. But these layers have to be removed for us to be truly situated in who we are. And that is uh, the objective of spirituality as well. Get to know thyself. Yes, Sandhya, you wanted to ask something? Um, yeah, I had two questions. One, uh, just clarification. So the mind is not any of the gate, right? No. And second one, uh, so this identifies with the Supreme Lord residing within the body. Can this also confuse people to mistakenly take it as Aham Brahmasmi? Like, rather, it's like part of the Supreme, identifying self as a part of the Supreme Lord who's residing within each one of you. know what I'm right. saying? Right. So. <sighs> If you go to the Gyan Yoga, they will say, you only are the God, right? If you go to the Gyan Mark, they say, Aham Brahma Asmi. And then Asmi, finally it will say, uh, you know, uh, what, do, what is the uh, Tattva Masi? And then Aham Brahma Asmi. These are the two atomic Vakyas on the Gyan, Gyan Mark Yoga. So divinity is residing within you. Okay. So, and but then if you you know, understand it from a bhakti mark and if you reconcile this philosophy, you understand, yes, divinity is resided within you and you are an eternal fragmental part of it. 
Okay, you are not God yourself. Because if you are God yourself, then how can you come under the influence of material nature, Maya? That means Maya is more powerful than you. Maya is more powerful than God. That negates the very definition of God. Right? So God cannot come under the influence of Maya. And let's say you become God-realized and what is the guarantee you will not again come back under Maya. Right? So this, these are a lot of questions that it opens up. So we are Anusat, Anuchit and Anuanand. That is the key. We are a fragmental part of God. Having said that, we have come under the sway of Maya and because we have come under the sway of Maya, which is the Prakriti, we start associating ourselves not only with this body, but also with our mind, intellect and ego as well. Those three things as well. So whatever our mind dishes out to us, we start associating ourselves with that as well. So that is that is that becomes a problem for us. So we are, and that's where we are going to talk about the tools that can help us uh, break that, uh, uh, you know, where we take our identity to be synonymous with our mind, you know, break that thought process. And those tools are very powerful. And in fact, tomorrow we will talk about the Sakshi Bhav or the witness consciousness, which is the tool on the path of Gyan. It is the tool. In Bhakti Marg, it is one of the tools. But it is a very powerful tool that we are going to talk about, which will... It's it's even in Vipassana technique, if you look at it in Buddhism, it is called body scanning, where you simply tolerate stuff. You understand, you you just be an observer there. You know, continue to observe the sensations in your body and you understand you are not this body. So do that contemplative practice around dissociating yourself with your body sensations lead you leads you to a realization that you are much more deeper, which is essentially the soul. And that witness consciousness is also part of that, right? So, uh, and in Western world, they call it uh, the sophisticated or or what you call that, the alibi that is used for this is uh, not alibi, I should say. They don't get to that level of witness consciousness and the soul and spirit soul and stuff like that. They call it mindfulness, limited there only. Be mindful, guys. Be mindful about what you're talking about, saying, right? Corporates, they use this word. Don't rather than being mindful, be mindful. So mindful is nothing but witness consciousness. If you take it truly, take it a step further. Mindfulness is just scratching the surface of being having that witness consciousness, which is what we are going to talk about in more detail tomorrow. I think uh, 10 15 minutes will not be able to do justice to that. So we will leave it for a topic for tomorrow. Uh, leave it as a topic for tomorrow. But today, what we have spoken about, any questions around it? that uh, we have spoken about today um, on this topic or for that matter, um, anything that we did previously on our uh, mind uh, soul soup segment as well. This couple of hands. Uh, Shri Ram Ji, Radhe Radhe, please, Shri Ram Ji, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe, thanks for the wonderful uh, advice so far here. Yeah. Uh, so actually a little kind of diversion to the initial topic you said, right? Solar eclipse. Um, I I mean, I don't have any much idea on that. Uh, like in the sense, people do some kind of like rituals or bath or something after that, right? Like, I mean, you guys also follow that or I mean, people in JK Yoga, when I say you guys, uh, that's what I mean. No, I mean, there's, yeah. there are no scriptural injunctions as such. I mean, if you think about it, don't look at it directly, which which is how science has also told you that right around that time. But uh, we look at for opportunities to take our mind to God. Okay, so anything that you could use as a trigger to take your mind to God is good. But as such, um, I, I, I at least haven't heard any injunctions around solar eclipse do's and don'ts around it. Now, any time is good time to do bhakti. So I would say, why not do bhakti if we are going to sit at home anyways? But other than that, if you do this, then you will get some kind of a benefit and stuff. At least I haven't heard about it and we should not really think too much about that anyways. But yeah, any time to do meditation and bhakti is good. So I would say if you're going to stay back home, that will be a good good time investment. So actually, just to add, uh, Radha Krishna Temple website, there is a blog uh, on solar eclipse. Okay, so there is which one. We, uh, I have just shared the link of that, uh, which has been written specifically for tomorrow's uh, solar eclipse. Okay. Um, details and some learnings and also, you know, some superstitions which could be probably ignored. Um, but things that you, one needs to be really careful about. So if anybody is interested, you can check that out. I've shared the link in the chat. Yeah. 
cool nice thank you so yeah thank you shri ram ji asking for that you can go through that blog uh, but yeah the only thing i have i've understood about solar eclipses don't look at it directly yeah, which i'm going to make sure i don't tomorrow one especially like because it's a complete solar eclipse so one has to be really careful about that yeah. Yeah, so I was checking for solar eclipse and then I saw the Rath Yatra also, you know, solar eclipse had happened and then they went to Brahma Kund in Kurukshetra and then Kurukshetra to Braj journey happened. So Rath Yatra uh, started because of that solar eclipse only. So that I found pretty fascinating. But actually there's another story as well, right? That when uh, the Leelas of uh, Radha Krishna were being described secretly, and Subhadra was, Subhadra ji was taking care that Krishna doesn't come and hear it. Because if right. he that is another one for Jagannath, I get that. But it, it I is, don't know which one is like, or if they, they God, are at it's not twice. like either. It's not either or, right? God can get into Mahava multiple times. So. so both of them happened, but at different times. It's like I would that. Like to, I would like to believe so. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. And Any other questions? Um, so, see, the key thing here to understand here is if one thing, this complex that God had create has created, not created, I mean, yeah, the faculty that he has given us, it's for a purpose, right? And that's where, and to thicken the plot, and now we have material energy here as well, and then we have mind, intellect, through which we experience stuff. So all of this had said, has ma made us forget forget our true identity, who we truly are, right? And now we are just trying to reintroduce ourselves to who we truly are, right? That is the whole purpose of spirituality. So if you think about it, first we've got our body, right? That association with our body is so strong that we think our bodily associates are true associates, right? That's the first level. And the second one is our mind, Mind, there is so many tons of literature written on mind management. Then we think every thought that comes to our mind, we identify with it. We, we accept it. Why? And because that it gives us turmoil, it gives us desire, it it troubles us when our mind is not in a good, uh, good state of, we are not in a good state of mind. And then our intellect, right, which is the governing part of our mind, which is giving decisions all at, at, at all point. And we are naturally organically associating with it without being able to take a pause and then of course that ego aspect is there me myself right uh, most of the problems happen in the world because of that false projection of ourselves that we have in our head all of that has to be dismantled so it's going to be a bit of a task uh, but then we have the right tools and we'll start discussing those tools as well and this knowledge itself is so powerful that if you keep on contemplating on it one is you keep on negating right in Gyanmar you keep on eliminating like for example in a multiple choice question you may not know the right answer but if you know the wrong answers you can eliminate three and say the fourth one is right so ganmar is neti 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 you're not this mind you're not this intellect you're not this body and then you keep on negating and then finally you reach that in bhakti mark you, what you do is you do the meditate the devotional practice when you do devotional practice you do seva uh, you contemplate upon god then it will automatically start taking away the stuff, you know, weeding out the stuff that is not you and your soul's propensity to serve will start shining forth. So your true nature of soul will keep on getting empowered and start shining forth or manifesting by itself. So we're taking the other path, right? Where you awaken your soul inside out, right? Outside in, it's not like that. So, um, but yes, the whole idea is to really reach that uh, true identification that we we have and the one that we have forgotten and we have introduced so many layers on top of it that is something we need to uh, dismantle systematically and we have the right tools and the right knowledge to make that happen of course it's going to be a bit of a journey but that is the conditioning we have to um, we, can, we have to work against yes any more questions around it yeah there are questions in the chat mm -hmm. um, there's one from viral s why did God give us all these elements if the end goal is to disconnect from all of them? <laughs> Why? To thicken the plotter. End goal is to dissociate. It's See, if God had not given us, first of all, if soul 
were not given these faculties it would be a very miserable existence at that point right he he will give us an upgrade at that point so we have chosen it's like you have paid for a horror movie and uh, you are getting scared i mean you are getting occasional um setbacks as well but then you don't want to get out of it because you're paid for it right so life is like a bit like that we have made that choice the day you make the choice that i need to go to god this movie will end but we are not able to make that result so it's not a, it's not something that he is i mean it's a philosophical question again right why this creation if this was going to be so messy for us anyways right uh, but then he's given us a choice he's given us a tool he's given us the manual as well and he's given us the potential to achieve him one day and um uh, his promise is to make us like him and like he said that right now we may not be able to appreciate it but once we reach there we'll say the pain and the wait and the journey was well worth it now when it will happen the pace can vary for each one of us but uh, uh, let's say that god whatever god does and guru does they do it out of compassion not out of vengeance or not out of with some kind of a pleasure they are deriving at our at our fun whatever they do they do it out of compassion only so if you understand this principle then we we need to have faith that okay whatever is this creation the setup is there it is for our welfare only and for us to realize our true potential all he's asking us to do from here on is to become a better person that's all i know all, it's a philosophical but yeah also can we say that like actually these are the tools meant to take us closer to god like if we see it that i mean so for saints it's the same maya which they use it as a tool to serve god but we find it as a trouble maker and i mean if i did not have ears i couldn't have heard the bhagavad gita class or satsang right so that way is utilizing them that way could be these are faculties which can actually be used to uh, get close to god or or enjoy what he really wants us to you know the the quality stuff that he really wants us to enjoy as well right if you think about it's only through years that god is able to hear ra and then get excited that next word is going to be the if ears were not there then he will not be able to write if nostril was not there it was only through this nostril those four manas putra brahma ji when they when they uh, you know that aroma of that tulsi fell in their nose coming from the uh, you know the tulsi that was placed on the foot of vishnu ji in vaikunt just that aroma put them into a trance so these faculties are there for a reason the problem is that we have started utilizing it for the dopamine kick that we get right so god says you purify yourself and then you will get an upgrade and then you will become mala mal you will become a billionaire I'll, I'll, that is his promise to us so let's let's just give benefit of doubt to god i would say that he has done it for a good reason and not created a game for us and having fun at our expense okay which i i i, I used to feel that for a long time not anymore <laughs> yeah um actually one more question so when we talk about people on the gyan mark and you know neti neti or detachment but is it possible to get detached uh, from the material world without being attached to god like mind has to be in either of the two realms right it cannot be in a hanging state see through contemplation it can take you to a certain level of course you do have that ability right so maya has two aspects to it guna varika and swarupa varika so swarupa varika maya or avidya maya you can actually develop that level of detachment or come to that particular state where you are like you know with rejection and through contemplation you can reach a level okay that much ability we have having said that you still cannot it's like you have diminished the seeds to an extent where they have become insignificant but seeds are still there but for you to truly cross over that you still have to surrender to god okay so do you have an ability to take it to an extent yes to an advanced level you can take but to conquer it you cannot you still have to attach your mind to god and what god the the sagun sakar god you cannot do it with nirgun nirakar because nirgun nirakar cannot grace and without grace you cannot cross over maya so and one when one is 
overcoming the guna varika maya where is their mind attached guna varika maya can only be crossed over by grace of god and grace of god can only come from a sagun sakar god light cannot That's grace right. so right. your mind has to be attached to a sagun sakar god only so your guru ji will tell you when you have reached an advanced stage of your gyan yog that dear disciple that is as far as i could have taken you from here on you have to do sagun sakar bhakti to cross over the cycle of life and death which is moksha for them right so if you have done your bhakti throughout with an objective of merging into the light even after doing sagun sakar that is the result you will get because all of a sudden you cannot change your sanskars right you always wanted to merge with the fulgence of god so you'll say okay god grace me so that i can merge with you and they'll say okay tathastu and dandi you are gone so but yes you need you know order to overcome guna varika maya you need to surrender to a sagun sakar god only so even a gyani finally has to uh, surrender to a sagun sakar god only that is the key principle it's a pretty interesting concept but yeah that's how it's meant to be can we make shall we make announcements right now or yes let's make the announcements and tomorrow like i said we will talk about the tools uh, starting with the witness consciousness so it's going to uh, the discussion is going to become more interesting so do plan to join and fill in the feedback tracker if you have any questions let's make the announcements and then we can get to our devotional segment as well let me stop oh. share for me right mainly two announcements one that of course people here in Dallas are super excited to welcome swami ji is going to be here in just a couple of days and uh, his arrival is going to coincide with uh, ram navmi celebrations uh, at radha krishna temple which is going to be really really blissful we are going to start with the uh, ayodhya a visit journey to ayodhya right and there are going to be multiple shows of it so nobody should miss out on that um and then yes we are going to have uh, registration okay, okay that is you're going to come to that go ahead go ahead registration for i think it's both events are available online and that needs a registration right are we sure about it being online i'm not sure okay, but whatever yeah. instructions you have but bhakti yeah. weekend retreat i would encourage everybody to register online because it is available online so right so bhakti kirtan retreat is going to be after so this ram navmi celebrations 13th april to 16th april uh, and of course swami ji's lecture and many things will be broadcasted online which anybody can attend and after this from 19th to 21st of april we are going to have the first ever bhakti kirtan retreat uh, of united states and uh, that is going to be a blissful experience for everybody and those who uh, think that they cannot they don't know how to cry in devotion i think this retreat will be uh, useful for that as well so please register anybody and everybody can register should register it's free of cost so don't miss out on this opportunity must and register yeah. let's say everybody must register don't must miss out register. on this opportunity <laughs> Yes. Yeah. All we right. get these opportunities uh, for the welfare of our soul. So let's not miss out on whatever comes our way, right? So Amiji's personal association, getting that is a huge privilege. Okay? So don't miss out on that. Please do register if not already. Um, and if you are here, nothing like it. We are expecting a full house, more than a full house here. And there were concerns about stampede also. I'm just kidding. But yeah. No, no, but we are going to have three shows. That's why, right? Of the same thing. Did you say three or free? Or three free? Three as well as three. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. Jhankis, and, those jhankis, you have to see them to believe it. Okay. I have a feeling. I don't know why. And uh, so please come over. Those jhankis are going to come live. And there are going to be a lot of uh, cultural programs. And a lot of exciting stuff. Good and food. that too by in-house talented team that we have, which is like, they always come up with greatest surprises. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. And uh, someone is asking, is it possible to get one-on-one -on -one time with Swamiji? So just come over and try your yeah. luck out. You, you just have to make a desire and yeah. say, I want to have one-on-one -on -one and I'm pretty sure it will work out. 
and thank you dhruval for turning on your video today it's good to see you first time thank you i've interacted with you but this is the first time i'm seeing you good to see new faces and putting faces to names thank you thank, thank you abhirav you are pretty abhirav. regular as well abhirav yeah feedback tracker is also shared multiple times so please fill it out and i think these were the announcements and we can move to the devotional segment now yeah we can move i just want to tell you again um, please do register for the bhakti kirtan retreat because it is the first of its kind which is being done here in us and if it's a good response i am pretty sure we'll have more of it and there's nothing better for our devotion to be part of these retreats uh, because it's going to be an immersive experience and then and then uh, what we learn here in theory it's a good way to take it to practice to take your mind to god and that too for an extended period of time without any interruption so look at it that way don't miss out on this opportunity okay now with that said let's move to our devotional segment uh please fill out the feedback tracker if you have any questions because it's going to be an interesting discussion tomorrow and let's get to our um, and today is one of my favorite verses from bhakti shatak mm -hmm. let's take a few hands yeah should i proceed yeah, go ahead please जग मह सुख दुख दो नहीं अस उर धरी ले ज्ञान राधे राधे सुख माने दुख मिलत है सुख न जगत महामान राधे राधे जय राधे कृष्ण राधे 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 कृष्ण राधे वेरी नाइस थैंक यू संध्या सो दिस वन सेज मेक अ फॉर्म रिजॉल्व दैट देर इज नाइदर ट्रू हैप्पीनेस नॉर सॉरो इन दिस मटेरियल वर्ल्ड एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ हैप्पीनेस लीड्स टू एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ सॉरो एंड डू नॉट कॉन्टेम्पलेट हैप्पीनेस एनीवेयर इन द वर्ल्ड जग मह सुख दुख दो अस उर धरी ले ज्ञान राधे राधे सुख माने दुख मिलत है सुख न जगत महमान राधे राधे श्री राधे कृष्ण राधे कृष्ण राधे कृष्ण राधे जय श्री राधे श्री राधे वेरी नाइस पायल जी लेट्स टेक अ फ्यू हैंड्स आई थिंक वी कैन टेक वी हैव टाइम 6 मिनट्स सो या राधे राधे श्याम जी राधे श्याम जी राधे राधे थैंक यू सो मच जग मह सुख दुख दो नहीं अस उर धरी ले ज्ञान राधे राधे सुख माने दुख मिलत है सुख ना जगत महमान राधे राधे जय राधे 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 कृष्ण राधे कृष्ण राधे 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 very nice shyam ji radhe radhe thank you shyam ji always comes with his unique punches right kiran <laughs> okay let's take the remaining hands radhe radhe dinesh ji radhe dinesh ji jag mah sukh dukh do nahi asur dhari le gyan radhe radhe सुख माने दुख मिलत है सुख न जगत मह मान राधे राधे जय राधे 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 कृष्ण राधे 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 एंड आई स्टे नेशी राधे राधे ओके आई थिंक वी कैन टेक द रिमेनिंग हैंड्स रियल क्विक वी हैव फाइव राधे राधे या राधे राधे रिया जी 
राधे 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 जग महा सुख दुख दो नहीं अस उर धर ले ज्ञान राधे राधे सुख माने दुख मिलत है सुख ना जगत महा महामान राधे राधे जय राधे कृष्ण राधे 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 कृष्ण राधे 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 थैंक यू रिया जी वेरी नाइस यू डोंट गेट अस टू रिसाइट श्लोका बट यू डिड वेल ऑन दिस वन सो वेरी नाइस थैंक यू ओके साईराम जी प्लीज गो हेड राधे राधे साईराम जी राधे राधे जग महा सुख दुख दो नहीं असुर धरी ले ज्ञान राधे राधे सुख माने दुख मिलत है सुख न जगत महमान राधे राधे जय राधे कृष्ण राधे 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 कृष्ण राधे राधे वेरी नाइस साई राम जी थैंक यू मृणाल जी एम विल बी हियरिंग यू आफ्टर लॉन्ग टाइम प्लीज गो हेड राधे 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 संध्या जी राधे राधे नितिन जी थैंक यू राधे राधे मृणाल जी गुड टू हियर यू जग महा सुख दुख दो नहीं असौर धरी ले ज्ञान राधे राधे सुख माने दुख मिलत है सुख न जगत मह मान राधे राधे जय राधे कृष्ण राधे 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 कृष्ण राधे 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 वेरी नाइस थैंक यू मृणाल जी सुमेश जी लास्ट बट नॉट द लीस्ट गो हेड थैंक यू मृणाल जी टर्निंग ऑफ योर वीडियो फॉर अ ब्रीफ मोमेंट थैंक यू राधे राधे सुमेश जी जग दो नहीं हरीले ज्ञान राधे राधे सुख माने दुख मिलत है सुख न जगत मान राधे राधे जय राधे कृष्ण राधे कृष्ण राधे कृष्ण राधे जय राधे जय राधे 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 वेरी नाइस सुमेश राधे राधे ओके वी हैव मिनट सो आई कैन गो एज वेल टुडे जग महा सुख दुख दो रीले ज्ञान राधे राधे सुख माने दुख मिलत है सुख जगत महमान राधे राधे जय राधे कृष्ण राधे 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 कृष्ण राधे Okay, so ten five today we have a perfect ending. So thank you again, everybody, um, for your engagement, turning on your videos, and for your enthusiastic participation. Have a wonderful day and a great rest of your evening. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. If you have any questions, please fill it in the feedback tracker, and we'll pick it up in the session as well. So thank you so much for that. Um, Radhe Radhe, good night, good day from my side. Thank, thank you. you so much, Nitin Ji, and thank you so much, everybody, for another engaging, exciting week start of DWFBG. So, see you all tomorrow. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe.